Ivan, stand by because uh, I now want to talk to our viewers about a man who so many of us uh, admired and whose work we followed closely. And those of us who cover the Middle East and the Arab wor world have lost a respected and admired colleague. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Anthony Shadid died in Syria. Shadid and his photographer had slipped into Syria to cover the fighting, much like they had done in numerous conflict zones over the years. But on their way out of the country this time, Shadid apparently suffered a severe asthma attack, which may have been triggered by horses used by their guides. Anthony Shadid leaves behind a powerful legacy of richly descriptive reporting and courageous journalism. Anthony Shadid was a frequent contributor to the front pages of the New York Times. But on Friday, it was his death that made headlines. The 43-year-old was on assignment inside Syria when he died of an apparent asthma attack. Shadid covered nearly two decades of conflict in the Middle East for the Times, but also the Washington Post, Boston Globe, and the Associated Press. He twice won the Pulitzer Prize for his coverage of Iraq. Shadid was a frequent guest on CNN, most recently to talk about one of his trips into Syria. You know, I think when I, when I saw Hama last month, it was probably one of the most remarkable moments in, in years in Syria. You really did have, I don't want to say the city was liberated, but there was free space. Shadid was no stranger to dangerous assignments in war-torn countries. Last year, Shadid and three other Times journalists were taken captive by pro-government militias in Libya. The group was held for six days, abused by their captors. Their driver was killed. Looking at death, or, or coming that close to death, I think it's not only that emptiness of resignation that you feel as it happens, but I also think it lingers a little while. Um, it, 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 you know, perhaps fades away over time, but <clears throat> it's something that you don't necessarily bounce back from right away. In 2002, Shadid was shot in the shoulder while reporting in the West Bank, but he never let the dangers he faced stop him from doing his job. I think there are some stories that are worth taking risks for. And it is a little bit of a cliche, but I think there is some meaning to it that, you know, unless you're there covering it, no one is going to, to know about it. Um, unless you're there trying to bring meaning to it, to bring a certain depth to it, uh, it won't be done otherwise. Shadid's death has triggered an outpouring of grief among friends, fans, and fellow journalists worldwide, many sending their condolences on social media. Susan Rice, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., saying on Twitter, heartbroken by the loss of the New York Times' Anthony Shadid in Syria, one of the world's bravest and best journalists. And this from Peter Goodman of the Huffington Post. Rarely does a journalist die and the world is different. But without Shadid, we will know less and settle for less nuanced, less human truth. Well, Ivan Watson joins me now, once again, live from northern Syria. And Ivan, you actually spoke to Anthony, I believe it might have been on, on the day of, of his death. We saw him last night, Hala, when, when I heard that uh, Anthony and photographer Tyler Hicks were uh, in the area, I, I went and surprised them in the hut they'd been staying in. Uh, they had been very careful during a week-long assignment in Syria, maintaining a very low profile and not publishing any of their stories while they were in the war zone. They were eager to get out uh, to uh, safety in Turkey to begin publishing their reports. Uh, one of the things that Anthony said uh, after I saw him and surprised him and hugged him uh, was that his trip in had been very arduous, Hala, and uh, that his uh, allergy to the horses that the guides had used had resulted in a, a, a horrific asthma attack that had forced him to collapse on the ground in the dark on a hillside uh, in the middle of nowhere uh, next to the border zone. Uh, in which they didn't know whether to go forward or to move back. And this shows the bravery of this man uh, that he then chose to go forward, put himself in harm's way yeah. to report uh, this story uh, that he's so committed to. Uh, I think the world has lost uh, an incredible communicator of, of, of this complicated and turbulent Arab world. Absolutely. Those, those of us who knew and admired him say arguably probably the best reporter of his generation in the Arab world. Thanks uh, so much, Ivan Watson, and to all our team and crew there reporting bravely from inside Syria. Let's turn our attention now to other stories.